Kasui on Samurott currently has a 24% usage rate in OU, which is standard play for competitive 6v6. That's a lot. A pretty average statistical Pokemon is in the top 5, even higher than Pokemon like Zapdos, Landorus T, or even Zamazenta. Regular Samurott with a similar stat distribution is an NU tier Pokemon, which means by usage rate it's in the 4th tier. That's a large difference between two Pokemon who are cousins. But Samurott H's usage is no fluke. It is a top 5 Pokemon, and it's mainly because of its signature move, Ceaseless Edge. Also, this video is sponsored by me. I'll be streaming on Twitch this month for the DLC, and I'm live every day including today at 7pm Eastern Time. I'll be playing Random Battles, OU, VGC, and when the DLC comes out, I'll be playing in-game, as well as playing and building with the new DLC Pokemon. Check out the Twitch and follow the channel, it doesn't cost you anything and helps me out a lot. But back to the video. Ceaseless Edge is a move that stacks one layer of spikes every time you attack with it. Why are spikes important? When you play in-game, the AI doesn't switch out. If you have a Fire-type versus a Grass-type, they're gonna leave that Grass-type in to faint. But human players aren't that dumb. If you have a Fire-type, they're gonna switch that Grass-type into a Water-type Pokemon. Real players are gonna switch in and out to gain favorable matchups. Switching is a common and fundamental part of the game, and as a result, anything that can punish switching, like Spikes and Stealth Rock, are automatically going to be very, very good. What makes Ceaseless Edge an excellent move is that you're doing damage and setting up a spike at the same time. Ordinarily, if you just use the move Spikes, it comes with the trade-off of not doing any damage that turn. Your opponent can punish that by doing damage that turn versus you. Spikes is a move that trades immediate damage now for long-term damage over time. Samurott Hisuian doesn't make that trade-off because you have to react to the taking damage aspect of the move too. If you try and treat Ceaseless Edge as if it was Spikes, you might just get one hit KO'd by the Edge move. It's interesting to note that in Hackmons, a competitive format where you can use hacked Pokemon, Ceaseless Edge is actually banned. Because there, you can put that move on any Pokemon, people are putting it on the best Pokemon. Hackmons is not too relevant to the actual metagame, but I bring it up just to illustrate how good of a move it can be. If any Pokemon could use it, every Pokemon would use it. But it's not like that move alone makes Hammerot Hisuian good. It also has the perfect toolkit to take advantage of it. Its ability Sharpness gives it a massive 1.5 time boost to its key attacking moves like Ceaseless Edge. Maybe if Samurott was a little weaker, you wouldn't have to respect it as much, but the power boost is noticeable and it really makes the move the dual threat of damage and spikes. Samurott H's speed is average, but it's better than regular Samurott, and its attack stat with the boost is pretty solid. It also gets a valuable move in Stab Boosted Knockoff. Stab Boosted Knockoff can remove heavy duty boots from Pokemon who want to try and be immune to spikes. Knockoff is a high value move overall anyway, but here it helps Samurott support itself. Finally, the Water Stab with Razor Shell is sharpness boosted and generally good, but it also fits the metagame really well. Great Tusk is the best rapid spin Pokemon in the tier, but it struggles to take on powerful water type attacks. It's also common for Great Tusk to forego a fighting type move in exchange for a support move like Knockoff or Stealth Rock. Without the threat of getting hit by a Stab Razor Shell, Great Tusk could otherwise easily switch into a Ceaseless Edge to go for Rapid Spin. But with Razor Shell, Great Tusk can't do that as effectively. Golden Go, another top 10 Pokemon, has its Ghost Typing block Rapid Spin and has its ability block Defog and that synergizes well with Hazard Stack. Basically, it has average to good stats and ability depending on your perspective, one of the best moves of all time, good synergy with that move, and with partners like Golden Go, it's in a nice spot in the meta. Spikes are literally always going to be good. There's no situation where they're bad, and as a result, Samurott always provides value in every single game, and it's why it's a high usage Pokemon. Every archetype or playstyle, from hyper offense to stall, can benefit from a reliable way to hazard stack. There are several common ways to use Samurott. One is a lead option for hazard stack offense. You lead the game and get as many hazards as you can. Or you can use it with a choice scarf to have a fast way to get up spikes reliably and also threaten top Pokemon like Dragapult. 
Another option is to use it as a sword net sweeper with Sucker Punch. You have the flexibility to hazard stack early game and go for a sweep in the end game. Or even scarier, you can hazard stack while sweeping. Beyond that, you can honestly do anything. Heavy Duty Boots is common as well to have a Pokemon that can switch in and out and spread damage and hazards. As long as you have its signature move, Samurott is going to be a positive contributor to your team and that's why it's at 25% usage. 